This is going to be a quick overview of the Litchi app. And you can see that the interface looks very similar to Go. You have uh, what would have been the camera view on the main screen right now, but it's black because I don't have the drone connected for this recording. And in the uh, lower right, you have the map window just like you have on Go. And you can tap on that to switch views. So the map is full screen and the camera is down in that little window, just like Go. In the lower left, you've got your uh, miles per hour, altitude, etc. Along the top, uh, you have some things that are similar to Go. Upper left, you have the Litchi icon, which if you tap on that, it'll let you record your iPad screen session. Next to that, you have the number of satellites, followed by the battery and the remote. Signal quality for the remote and the video feed, followed by the battery for the drone itself. And finally, a settings icon, those three gears. We'll go over the settings. The units I had to set to Imperial for metric, since we're in the U.S. here. And the map type I have set to satellite. You can set satellite, hybrid, or standard. We'll set it to hybrid just for grins and then enable speech that's so that the ipad will talk at you about setting home points setting warnings etc down here you also want to set your go home altitude that's for return to home you can uh, set the mission end to be return to home and then you're going to want to set that underneath that you have a healthy drones user token and the app will automatically upload the log straight into Healthy Drones. You don't have to do a thing. It's wonderful. I wish all of these apps would do this. You can assign the C2 key on the right side of the controller, the button underneath, to any of these functions. I have it disabled currently. Below that, auto record, so it'll automatically start recording once uh, it starts flying. You can set a preview quality. These, uh, I have it set to four megabits, which I found to be just fine. If you're seeing quality issues, you can up that value there. And then a transmission channel, which I assume if you're flying around somebody else, uh, you can set the channel manually, so you're not stepping on each other's control commands. On the left side of the screen, you can see there are four buttons. They are in order. Load Mission, Save Mission, Mission Settings, and Run Mission. So if we go to Load, you can see that I have saved a couple of missions here. And I'm going to load one now, which is the Observatory Point of Interest Test. You'll notice that the map view down below now has changed. I'm going to switch to that map view, so uh, that's going to be what we're looking at for the rest of this overview of the app. The button next is Save. Now it'll save as the previous name you get it, or you can say no, and it will prompt you for a new name for the mission. Then you have mission settings. And in mission settings, uh, there's a couple of things. I'm not even sure what they are here, but uh, I'll just uh, give you a quick overview of what I do know about. On the finish action, I have it go back to the first waypoint. On uh, the path mode, I set it to curve turns because I want some very smooth uh, curves as it's, you know, rotating around the observatory. You can set your cruising speed, that's self-explanatory. And the default curve size, I set that to 100% because I want the maximum amount of curvature. And I'll show you how that stuff works in just a bit. Underneath that, we have the gimbal pitch mode, which you can set to interpolate, which will give you a really nice smooth pitching of the gimbal. I did not have this turned on for the tests that I ran today. And then you have uh, rotations direction. I don't know what that is. You can cancel. And oddly, if you hit cancel, it will save all your setting changes that you've made here. So for example, if I come back up here and I say I want the cruising speed at two miles an hour and I cancel, come back in, oh, it saved it. Cancel is just to get rid of the dialog box. It should really be closed. So let's get this back up to 11, 12 miles an hour. Now the arrow on the bottom pointing to the right 
will take us to the settings for a given waypoint. And I'll go over those after we have started a new mission. The last button down here after we cancel is run. That's a little right pointing arrow right there. And uh, currently I don't have the drone connected as you can tell, so it's not gonna run the mission. But normally what you would do here is you would fly the drone up into the air close to your first waypoint, then hit your start and it will confirm that you want to do this. And once you say you do, it will then show a progress bar illustrating that it's uploading the mission to the drone. And then once that's completed, it will start the mission and uh, fly around in the uh, path that you've defined. When we switched over to map mode here for the full screen, some new tools appeared in the upper right corner. There's a teardrop looking thing with a yellow plus sign and that's to add a point of interest. Next to that is a and you use that to draw the path you want the drone to fly. Next to that is a little X that clears all the waypoints and all the way to the right there, the crosshairs will place the map at the home point. So the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to start a new mission by clearing out this one by pressing X. I want to clear all, I will say OK. Now I will bring the map down a little bit and we're going to start a new mission. So the first thing I will do is set a point of interest. And that point of interest will be the center of the top of the observatory. And it's not quite in the center there. So what I can do is I can touch and hold that teardrop icon and it will then allow me to move it. So that looks pretty centered to me. So I'll do that real quick. Now a dialog box will come up with the settings for the waypoints and it will allow us to set a bunch of settings and apply it to all the waypoints it's going to generate. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lower the altitude here. And altitude makes jump, so I'm going to set it to 62 feet. And the curve size, apparently I can't set that. I'm not sure why. Uh, the heading, I'm not going to bother with that. I am going to set the point of interest to the one that we defined, which is now called one, as you see with the number one on that blue teardrop. And then gimbal pitch mode, I'm going to say to interpolate, that should smooth the gimbal's movement as it uh, turns the drone around in a circle. And you can set the gimbal pitch angle and then actions, which says disable with curved turn. What this does is this allows you to set an action for all of the waypoints to execute. And I'll get into that action function on the individual waypoint settings. Now I wanted to talk a little bit about the waypoint icons. If you look at one of the icons, you can see that it looks like it has a little paper airplane. And that paper airplane represents the drone and what direction the drone will be facing. So if we zoom out a little, we can see that all of the waypoints are aiming the drone at my point of interest. We can also see that my path here is not very smooth looking. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to move around some waypoints and then I'm going to add a waypoints also to kind of smooth things out. I want to also point out that the little blue line that you see around this, so you might see it between three and four, there's a little blue curved line. That's showing us the actual path of the drone and the curve that it's going to execute for that part of the point of interest flight. So now that we've moved our waypoints around, we can look at the settings for a given waypoint by just touching the little teardrop part of the waypoint. This is the waypoint settings box. And in the upper left, you can remove the current waypoint. And if you do that, it's automatically going to select the next waypoint. So be careful, don't do a double tap on that minus, or you could delete a waypoint that you wanted to keep. The plus obviously adds a new waypoint. 
So our first settings here, we can set an altitude. Uh, it's currently set to 65 feet, but you can set separate ones for each. Curve size is currently set to 22 feet, the maximum I can use because I want a wide curve, smooth. The heading, uh, you can set it. Uh, currently, it's going to point to the uh, point of interest. And the point of interest that I have set is one, which is the one we created at the beginning of this. Under gimbal pitch mode, I have it set to interpolate so it will smoothly move the gimbal should the altitude change between the waypoints. Gimbal pitch angle is currently set to positive 23 degrees, so that's going to default to zero. And then down here we have actions, and under this you can tell it for each waypoint, you can say stay for a specific number of seconds, take a photo, start or stop recording the camera, rotate the aircraft, or tilt the camera. Very slick. I'm going to add a waypoint. And now we have waypoint number nine. I can now move number six down a bit. And number seven kind of do that. Now number seven's curve doesn't look very big to me. See that curve size? We're going to change that. Now you see the blue line gives us a nice, nice curve there. We'll do the same for eight. It's got a 13 foot curve. How does six look? Yeah, I want all these curves to be maxed out. And the rest of them look pretty good. So there you have it. After the mission uploads, it will confirm that it's flying to the first waypoint. And that's what we're seeing right here. And then it will begin to execute the mission. Now on this mission, this first one here, I did not really adjust the curves of the turns very much at all. So we kind of see a little bit of a clunkiness like we saw with the DJI Go app. And uh, once I adjusted those though, this seemed to fly quite a bit better. Although I did see kind of a weird behavior with that. And I'll show you that in just a second. Once it's done with the mission, it flew back to the first waypoint and then hovered right there. I was able to fly it back. I've sped the clip up here so that you can see the motion of the drone more clearly. On this second run of the mission, I had adjusted the curves. So this one actually comes out a little bit smoother. But it does this kind of weird behavior. It starts a mission here and then it angles the gimbal down. Right there. Kind of weird. That was right around the third waypoint, I think, in the mission. But looking at this movement here, this looks really smooth, really nice. I think that they've done a pretty good job controlling the uh, movement of the drone to get a nice smooth shot. Again, I've sped the clip up. You can see that it's a lot smoother here. I'm not sure if it's smoother or as smooth as Airness though.